Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali, and today I'm going to be doing a kind of like, I think I've done this before, but like how I get ready for work basically. And what I just wanted to show is like how to like, if you are the type of person that you want something quick and easy, but you still like to look kind of like, I don't want to call it glamorous, but like put together and pretty and just like how to enhance like your natural features. That's what this video is all about. It's going to be a little bit more natural. So yeah, I'm not going to dilly dally. I'm just going to go ahead and get on into it. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe before you leave. So let's go ahead and get started. As always, I like to start with hydration. So I'm going to use the Feel Pure Anywhere Balm in Rose on my lips. My cat is talking to the rain. Oh my gosh, that just feels so nice. I got it in my Ipsy bag. And then I've been trying this out. This is the Pixi Beauty Rose Caviar Essence. It's in an encapsulated moisture serum. So I've been using this like before foundation just to kind of like, I don't know, check it out, I guess. So it's like after sunscreen, but like before primer and foundation. And my skin's been extremely dry lately, but also very acne prone. I don't know what it is, but like, I feel like a lot of people, if they're like combo, they get oilier and then get acne prone. Mine's like dry and then acne prone. I was doing so good on my skincare journey. Um, my skin was looking great and then it's not anymore. I'm going to go in with the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. That Pixi Serum really soaks into the skin quickly which is nice so here's my thing oh gosh before work I don't really like to fill in my brows I just like to use a brow gel and one of the ones or like a tinted brow gel one of the ones I've been loving is the brow gal by Tanya Crooks it's the insta tint brow gel for brown oh my gosh for brown hair and I've just been really enjoying this. I feel like it just adds like a tint to my brows, but also like some fullness. I don't all, like sometimes I will fill in my brows, but most of the time, like even if I'm not in a hurry, and that's what this video isn't. This video isn't like do your makeup in a hurry. This is just like you have some time, so you're gonna do your makeup, you know what I mean? But it's still like 30 minutes maybe. I'm running out of this stuff. I also like the boy brow. If you want a drugstore option, the Ulta one is okay. So is the Essence one. It kind of depends like what your preference is. I just think the Essence one gets really goopy. And I feel like the Ulta one doesn't have like a shade that I like. And the Ulta formula also runs out very quickly. So take that for what you will. I am going to be wearing eyeshadow, so I'm going to take the Photo Focus Concealer from Wet n Wild and prime my eyelids. Sometimes I use an eye primer. Um, I've been liking the Urban Decay one, the one in the shade Eden. But I don't feel like it's necessary. Um, that one is like, I bought it on sale for $12, but it's like $22. This is like $5. I will see how long the... Urban Decay one last though because I do go through the Wet n Wild one pretty quickly. Especially for like how much I use. Like I don't use that much. Alright, I'm going to set everything. I'm going to use this eyeshadow from Ulta Beauty. It's this one right here and it's in the shade Coconut. I'm going to use my Sephora All Over Shadow Brush. And it's like a denser, larger shadow brush and I just kind of pack it on. This is like the perfect shade for me for like an all over like tone correcting primer setting powder. The uh, Wet n Wild Creme Brulee is a lot more inexpensive so keep that in mind. It's kind of just whatever your preference is. This formula is a little bit different though. It's a little bit lighter weight. I feel like the Creme Brulee one is really heavy. Alright so that's done. Now I'm going to move on to eyeshadow. So there's lots of different options for eyeshadow if you're just looking to enhance, excuse me, enhance your natural features. I have this one from Urban Decay. It's the Urban Decay Naked Basics. Um, I love the black shadow in this, but it always breaks, so I don't have that in there. But this is just a collection of like cooler tone shades. You have a brow bone, a brow bone highlight, um, a yellow shade that I would never use, and then kind of like three just like brownie shades. 
but if you don't mind having a bigger palette, the Jaclyn Hill palette is also really nice for every day because it offers a lot more variety, as you can see. So I'm kind of going to dip into both of them, I guess, because I do, I would, I don't know, I'm just, I've been wanting to use this Urban Decay one for a while and I just like never reach for it. So I'm going to take the shade Naked 2, it's my most used shade, and I'm actually also, when I'm done with my eyes, I'm going to take this in the brows a little bit because I do like this in my brows and you'll see like this offers just like a simple just a simple eye contour not anything crazy it's kind of a good way to just give your eyes some shape not really doing anything I guess then I'm going to go back into that naked two shade and put some of it in my brows just to add some like almost like natural highlights to my brows and fill them in just a little bit more I can take the shade faint and put that kind of at like the tail of the brows just like really really lightly this by the way this is a elf small angled brush as you can see that offers like a lot more pigment and it just kind of creates a tail like there really wasn't one before because that is the problem with tinted brow gels is like you can't really get a shape but i feel like this is a really really quick way to add some shape so there you go i'm gonna hold off on using that palette for one second and I'm gonna go into the Jaclyn Hill palette. She has this shade right here. It's like three down. It's underneath like that yellowy shade. I don't know the name of it but I prefer like a shimmer on the lid but it's all about personal preference. You don't need a shimmer on the lid. I frequently wear mattes as well but I just feel like there's something so refreshing about a shimmer on the lid. I don't know. And this one's really nice. Then I'm going to go one more time into that Naked 2 shade. Okay, so as you can see, my eyes are like super, super natural. I do like to tight line, so I'm going to take the Milani Stay Proof Waterproof Eyeliner in the shade Slate. This isn't black. Now I'm definitely gearing this towards people that like they're not really allowed to wear makeup at the workplace. I am. My job does not have rules against like stuff like that so I'm allowed to wear things like you know makeup to work but I do know there are employers that don't like it so this is definitely geared more towards that where you just want to enhance your natural features without breaking any rules so for primer I'm going to take the hourglass mineral veil primer I have like a little sample size and I really really like it I don't like it's really expensive it does remind me of like the NYX angel veil so I feel like it doesn't separate as much I feel like that one separated in the tube a lot, but it does give you like a veil, which I think is like crazy. Like look at my skin. I mean, it still looks like shit, but like for foundation, when I want to go natural, um, I have, you know, glossy skin tint. I love, what's the other one I've been liking? Oh, the Essence Stay Fit and Awake. Like it's a foundation, but it kind of applies like a BB cream. Those two are really nice, but one of my all-time favorites is the Your Skin But Better CC Cream from It Cosmetics because it has SPF 50 and it has like like some good skincare properties. I love this stuff. I do, I like to apply it with my hands, but that's like hard to do when you only have a handheld mirror. So and I just like to, any streakiness I will fix, but... I apply this similar to the Glossier Skin Tint. I apply it in light layers at a time, just like applying things with their hands. I have always done it. I used to only apply makeup with my hands. I used to only use like cream products because I didn't want to use brushes. The only thing I would use brushes for would be like bronzer and powder. Everything else like concealer, foundation, even blush I would apply with my hands and eyeshadow oh my gosh I applied all my eyeshadows with my hands now I do go over it with a sponge because if I like you have to you have to do a whole lot of rubbing if you want it to look good on your skin with just your fingers and it gets kind of tiring when you're holding a mirror up actually you know what I like the way that looks that is one problem I'm having right now is like my skin doesn't look the best so when your skin doesn't look the best your makeup doesn't look the best. YouTube tricks you into thinking that you're not worth as much because your skin doesn't look good as a lot of those bigger influencers. What those bigger influencers don't tell you is that they're putting a lot into their skin. 
you know, ultimately their skin, their face is their money maker, like legitimately. So putting a lot into it to make it look the way that it does. Um, which is fine, but it's kind of disheartening for those of us that don't have good skin. You just really can't believe, I don't want to say you can't believe them, but like when they're trying to sell you products, keep in mind that they have really nice skin. I'm going to use this sponge and just go over everything a little bit, get any excess product off. I go over really lightly, get any streakiness off my face. I don't put a lot of product on my forehead. I feel like my forehead, for some reason, is like, it's one of the few places where things like look good. Concealer, I'm only using this because I wanna use it up. It's a Tarte Shape Tape, but I really do love the Bare Minerals Bare Skin, but this is also too dark, so these kind of, I use them together mostly. I just use a little bit of this under the eyes. But I do not like this concealer. I don't recommend it. I don't like Tarte Shape Tape, but I'm not that person. But the Bare Minerals Bare Skin is really, really nice. This is dark enough where I can put it on like some of my blemishes and stuff. I'll put it on my forehead. Just keep in mind, you know, you can, you can put concealer on all day, but you're not going to get rid of texture on your skin, unfortunately. And that's what most breakouts are, is just pure texture. You can get rid of the redness, you can get rid of the... The outward visible appearance of it but ultimately you're still going to see the bump that's why i don't i don't like full coverage foundations because i would rather have my skin poke through and have you be able to see what's under there than try to cover up all of them and then just look like the surface of mars covered up with beige wallpaper you know what i mean okay so i have very mixed feelings about powder because I feel like so I work out on my lunch break at work and it's a lot easier to touch up makeup when you don't have powder over top of it the flip side to that though is my makeup won't move around as much when I work out so it's this is all basically what I'm saying is this is all based on personal preference um I am going to use some Glossier Wilder especially under my eyes what am I doing? Wait, I still have some cream products to use. <laughs> Hold, please. <laughs> okay, let me start with highlighter. I have the Super Shock Cheek in Lunch Money. I still don't know how I like to apply this yet. So I'm going to try it with a sponge today. I'm just like dipping it right in to see what that does. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. Never applied it this way before. My point with the powder is like you are going to, if you're going to put powder products on top of your skin, that will help set your makeup anyway. And like there's some powders that I really like to use and like I really enjoy using um, because they just look so good on the skin that it's worth, you know, wearing like the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores powder and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know, I just, I don't think powder is necessary, I guess is what I'm getting at. And I feel like we make it feel like it is when sometimes depending on your skin type, it may not be what's best for you. I'm going to take the Glossier Cloud Paint in the shade Puff. And I like this brush to apply it. It's the Real Techniques uh, Sculpting Brush. I just take it and swirl it around on my hand and oops, pat it onto the cheeks like this. And take a sponge because I got too much product. Do the same with the other side. So a downside to not setting your powder is that foundation is really sticky. So I find that I get these like minuscule little hairs that stick to my face, which is really annoying. So if that's something that you know bothers you, setting your foundation will probably be worth it. I did just want to point that out. Like I literally just had to go to the mirror and get like four off of my face. But I do always set under my eyes no matter what. And I do set like the portion of my face like by my nose so like right here because I just I produce a shit ton of oil right here and I have a lot of pores there and so it's really nice to be able to cover some of that. I do have lines on my forehead so I like to take powder up there as well. That's another reason I don't put a lot of foundation up there is because first of all I don't really need it. That doesn't get red. It doesn't really have a whole lot of bumps or anything like that but it also I get those lines and then lastly my chin. I'm going to go back to the powder in a minute, but now I'm going to do some bronzing. I like to do what I call brontouring, so I take this Ulta powder brush that has like kind of a strange shape, it kind of fans out a little bit, but it's still, you know, puffy, and I like to take the Makeup Geek 
sun-kissed bronzer you can get this at Target now and it's pretty light so I like to swirl that around make sure there's no minuscule little hairs because I haven't set my foundation yet on this part and just like to lightly bronze this area and this will create a little bit of definition but it's just it's very very light I actually will go in with another bronzer and even though we're working with most of the cool tones today I still want to look bronzy because I am going to take some Anastasia brow gel to set down I know I put that tinted brow gel in but I also put that powder in so it just helps set everything down I feel like I got something else on my face all right so now for bronzing part two I'm going to take the Becca Sunrise Waves bronzer. It's breaking though. It's really annoying. It keeps breaking like where the opal is. So like as you can see like the opal is like really wearing down but the bronzer is not. Don't know what that's about. But anyway I'm going to take the Real Techniques powder brush. This really huge ginormous brush and just swirl it around here. Maybe I'm too rough with it. I don't I really don't know. And I'm just going to take this, really bronze up the skin. I even try not to like, when I tap off excess, I try not to do it on the actual, the container. So I don't, I really don't know why it's, it's like falling apart. But it just, it has that ring of opal and opal is like a cool color because it's almost like a dirty gold. So it looks good with both warm and cool tones, which I think is like very um, inventive. So I am gonna take, I'm gonna take a little bit more. This is the Glossier Wowder, by the way, if I didn't mention. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that and kind of like anywhere where I went a little bit crazy with the bronzer, I'm gonna add some powder. And then I also like to add some powder just right here in the gap between where like the blush bronzer and like my mouth is basically. So before I put um, powder highlight on, I am gonna take my Smashbox Primer Water and spray my face. This just kind of helps all the powders melt in before I put highlight on. I do like to take some white eyeliner. It just brightens up the eye. I have to warm this one up. It's the Ulta Beauty one. I just put that in my waterline. And then for my lower lash line, I'm going to go back into that Naked Basics palette and just take that Naked 2 shade. That one right there. I'm going to use the Sephora small shadow brush and put that, like I said, on my lower lash line. Alright, and then... I'm going to go in to the Venus shade right here and put that in my inner corner. And it's not as blinding of an inner corner as I would use you know, if I was like going out or something, but it still brightens that area up. So I know I did use that cream highlighter and it is offering up a glow, but I just like to set it with a powder highlighter. One that's not super, super intense. So I'm going in with the Too Faced Loved Light Blinded by the Light highlighter. I really loved this going into that same brush I used to set my under eyes. I'm just really buffing that into the skin. And I'm mostly keeping it on the very, very high points of my cheeks, even though, actually, let me take it out here a little bit. I never like doing that. I don't know why I just did that. And this one is like the perfect, perfect highlight for pale skin if you don't like blinding, blinding highlights. It's weird because this is called like blinded by the light, but I don't, it's not like a blinding highlight to me. Very much like a subdued, highlight glossy is what I think Arna Elaine is she calls it glossy she's the one that I watched that used this it was like oh my gosh this is the best highlight for pale skin I was like okay let me buy it <laughs> all right so now I'm gonna take my Morphe continuous setting mist and set all of it for mascara the glossy lash slick that's my favorite for a more subtle mascara it's lengthening and not volumizing all right, and lastly for lips, I'm going to take the Finding Ferdinand lipstick in the shade On Natural, and I'm going to apply it right over the balm. All right, so this is my, like I said, my work, work glam routine, and yeah, it's not a whole lot. It, it, it took longer, obviously, because I was like talking to the camera, but if I'm really taking my time, it'll take 30 minutes. If I'm not, it can take like 10. And it's just like really fresh and really glowy. And it is like a cooler tone look, which really helps enhance 
the contours of your eyes and stuff like that. But it also just, I like can't stop looking at myself because I think I look stunning. But yeah, I, I think this turned out really well. I wear this often. And like I said, the less powder you put on, the easier it is to take something like the Wet n Wild Cushion Foundation and take a sponge and like touch up if you absolutely have to. But yeah. So that's it for this look. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!